Welcome to Phonogenics 101, a Riot Boy production hosted by Jeremy Gloff. The podcast where people who love music discuss albums track by track. Please hit subscribe, and if you'd like to support this podcast, patreon.com slash Jeremy Gloss or Venmo at Jeremy Gloss. And now, on to the music. Welcome to Phonogenics 101. Tonight we have one of my idols, but also my friend. We developed a friendship. Brenda Bennett from Vanity Six is here to talk about the Vanity Six album track by track with David from Miami and Jeffrey from LA. How's everyone doing tonight? Very good. Right? <laughs> so to give a little background, I'll do a little, we uh we have about an hour, so I'll be quick. I actually heard the Apollonia Six album first uh, because I found it at the Jamestown Mall, Jamestown, New York, not to be confused with Jamestown, Rhode Island. And uh, I didn't even know that the Vanity Six album existed until I got my Bible, the Prince book by Stephen Ivory. I had that book. <laughs> and there was a picture of Vanity Six in the book. So uh -huh. it was talking about all the songs. So I knew all the song titles. They sounded so interesting. So I went to the Jamestown Mall. And lo and behold, I found the vinyl of Vanity Six. And I think I was 12 or 13 years old. I had to hide it from my mom because some of the song titles were a little bit risque. But <laughs> I do have to say, you know, middle school was a tough time for me. That's when everyone in the school realized I was gay before I did. It took like the school realized like 10 years before I did. So wow. I got, yeah, I got picked on a lot. But a safe space for me was just to sit in my bedroom with my little record player and play this record over and over. And Brenda, the strength that you guys portrayed, I'm going to get a little emotional, but the strength that you guys portrayed on this album saved our lives. Like you, you saved our lives when we were kids, like these kids all over the United States, you were so strong and such a beacon of a life that existed outside of this little town. Aww. Yep. So ooh, David or Jeffrey, do you want to share a little something with Brenda before we go into the, I mean, I've just always loved both albums. I mean, I was a Prince fan and, you know, the first time I ever heard Nasty Girl and the first time I ever heard Napoleon Six song, not really kind of realizing that it was all Prince world, just fell in love and, you know, got both records and loved every track and have for, since the day they came out. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, what's going on in the background behind you? What well, those are paintings I, I make. Those are lovely. Thank you very much. That's a huge compliment. Thank you. I love those. I, I like the colors. I like all the shapes. I like how they how they complement each other. That's that's really nice. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, Mr. David. Uh oh God. Um I was a big fan of Nasty Girls. It's it's a mood for me. And um I remember working at um at a Bubba Gum Shrimp company here in Miami early 2000s and I was always playing Nasty Girls and one of the servers was like have you ever heard their whole album I go their whole album we went back to her house played the whole album loved it completely bits and pieces of it because there were some songs that I hadn't heard because obviously she didn't have it and at that time we had Napster and we were trying to download as much as we could <laughs> but um oh, if a girl answers it is is so my jam, so my jam. Like my bestie, who's not here, huge fan of yours because he'll play Blue Limousine left and right, yep, twenty four seven for him. Oh. And um, we love competing, doing the whole. We'll have somebody try to imitate Prince, and I'll be Vanity, and and he'll be you, and and we'll just do the song back and forth, and. There's always a kind of an argument in our group, like, which one's the Brenda? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> Jeff, our friend that we're talking about, uh, he'd probably love that we shared the story, but he was one of the people in the Pulse shooting. And I went to visit him in the hospital right after the shooting. And one of the first things he said to me, he's like, this person came to the hospital to see me. And I told him, I don't even want to see you. He's like, my inner Brenda came right out. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> you such are such a reputation. Yes, <laughs> you are such a part of our lives. So thank you for being here. Uh, uh, I'll show the rest of my collection really quick. Of course, I have the uh, a couple of the twelve inch singles here. Oh, nice! With wow. the extended version, and of course, I do have to show my "Blame It on Vanity" book that you have that. Yeah. I don't uh, even have that. I couldn't these... get a well, I couldn't get a copy of it. It was like just on the tail end of things where it never came. And now me. they go for like a thousand dollars. I'm oh wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would love to read that. And I just uh, remember talking to her quite a bit uh, when she was writing it around that period of time of her life, and and um, she always kept saying, "Give me pictures, give me pictures, oh. give me pictures." Because she, um, some place where she had had a lot of her stuff stored had been broken into, oh. and a lot of things had been stolen, and um, and she was supposed to be sending a book, and I guess it got too close to when she was starting to get really sick, mm. and um, I never got it, and now I I am I can't get it. I mean, I look for it from time to time, and. Well, Brenda, I am an eBay bargain hunter, so I'm going to find you a copy. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I think, you know, everyone knows the story. First, Prince wanted to have a band called The Hookers. Then wasn't it rumoredly Vagina? And Vanity's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, yeah, we all kind of didn't, didn't, didn't go with that one. That was just a little, as it was when, when we all showed up at Kiowa, his house on Kiowa um for the first time she was had already been there okay and recorded nasty girls with her vocal on it with him and so when by the when susan and i walked in we were virtually walking in to hear the song and put the other stuff on it right there that day yeah oh. and um within within a week or so uh the first week being there um that's when he brought, there wasn't, we hadn't decided on a name for the band. And it wasn't really decided on, on her name. She wasn't going to remain Denise Matthews. It was okay. just, yeah, it needed to be something a little bit, and I can't say glamorous, but it certainly had to be something that was going to be catchy. Right. And something that was going to stand out and make people go, what? And that's when um, Prince brought up, well, how about we just name the band Vagina? You know, and I went, blah. <laughs> you know, Susan just went, whoop. <laughs> you know, and, and, and V looked at him and just went, uh -uh, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, that didn't go over too big. <laughs> I'm so glad we're not on a podcast in 2024 talking about Vagina 6. I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> Me too. I don't know if I would have I agreed to stay doing the project at that point, because it just was that when I heard the song, I loved the song, but at the same time, I kept going, uh, were we going to even be able to play this? Is this going to be able to play on the radio? I mean, this is a little bit kind of, you know, you're we're pushing the envelope here, you know, and um, he just said, never mind that. <laughs> so, you know, um, it was, I, I, I felt like and what, there was a lot of things that were that were mixed that were running around inside me at the same time, and one of them was, "What have I got myself into?" Right. <laughs> you know? I mean, I come from, as you know, I come from a musical background to begin with. Right. Um, but nothing is as um, not well. It's not. I don't know. It's not risque. Isn't the word that I want to use. Um, it's definitely oh, edgy, wouldn't you say though? Really uh, edgy. Well, it was edgy, but it was it was so open. Oh. You know, um no limitation, you know, in in the, the way it was coming out for that subject matter, you know, the whole sexual connotations and all that sort of right. thing. And um and I I mean it was obvious that he was already in that sort of kind of genre of um thought of creativity and messaging or however you want to put it 
And so um, when I agreed to do the project, I had no idea it was going to be like like it like it was. And um, so I, I had to grapple with it for a little bit. I had to make a decision of, you know, sticking with it or not sticking with it. You know, um, I'm not a prude by any uh, sense of the word um, I, or by any means. But at the same time, you know, I've always had this, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do is up to you. But some things just I felt needed to remain behind closed doors. Sure. You know. Um, because when you share it so openly all over the place, it loses some of the sensitivity. It loses some of the beauty. And the intimacy. It some of, yeah, it loses some of the comfort and the and the sort of just special spot when you have that kind of thing going on with somebody. Um, and to, for me to open that up and share, you know, just... So um, latent, right? Um, I had to I'd get my head wrapped around that a little bit. Plus, I'm I'm the oldest of the three. I was the oldest in the whole freaking organization. That was, which is a very, it was a very uh, well kept secret. For instance, it was like a little secret weapon of his, and um, why he always said that I don't know. But um, so I came from a little bit different generational background. And um, even though, you know, I was a rocker and a blues artist and had been on um, the road since the 70s, the early 70s, um, and there's all kinds of things. I mean, for me to say I survived the 70s and I survived the 80s, you know, it's pretty great. It's probably pretty monumentous, you know. I always make that comment about the 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 mileage in back of me, and um, there's a lot of miles there. <laughs> so anyway, but go ahead. What do you got? Yeah. Like, so one of the you know the the legends is where did exactly did the six come from? Is the legend true that's because of uh there were six breasts in the band? That's what the word on the street well, was. I mean, when you look at it there was six breasts there was six arms there were six okay. legs there was six, you know i mean it was everything that encompassed making up the three women and okay. yeah i mean it was kind of um it was it was almost kind of like a nonsense thing um one of the songs when i was living in london after the purple rain tour um i was working with d harris and um one of the songs that we wrote and recorded, um, um, there was some 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 kind of sen uh, nonsense words in the chorus. Kukuwea Maya was was part of the chorus, you know, and to just use that and and it, and it left people, you know, wondering what it was and what does it mean? And is there a special meaning? Is there a secret kind of thing to it? And it was just sort of like, oh, oh I, I don't know. It's just three times two equals six, <laughs> you know, but there wasn't any really particular secret formula to it. It was just- the, That's kind of the beauty of it a little bit. It's yeah. And, and it was just, you know, it was the three of us. And funny enough, all three of us, our birthdays were in January, are in January. Um, Denise is, um, Denise, uh, I call her, I flip back and forth between Denise, Vanity, V, you know, <laughs> um, her birthday was earlier in the month. I'm in the middle and Susan was like two days after me. So, um, you know. And it's interesting because there are such three strong personalities in this band and, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's like, you know, Prince created this, but so much of who you were came through in that, that it really felt genuine like that really seemed like who susan was who vanity was and who you were or at least pieces of yourselves would you say that's accurate or was it um to a point yes i mean more so with um so we were we were playing a part but we also had it within us to, to bring something special to each one right uh, prince always called me the punk <laughs> because <laughs> because um, he and I used to fight back and forth about <laughs> stuff he wanted me to wear, you know, and I was willing to go just so far 
and he wanted me to look really trashy. And I was just, no motherfucker, I ain't going to be doing that. <laughs> Shit. And that's the Brenda we uh, love right there. <laughs> you know, and I grew up a tomboy um, between two boys and really didn't have a, a girlfriend until, I don't know, I was like 14, something like that. I, there were girls that I knew at school when I went to school and stuff like that. But as far as people that I hung out with that were really close best friends, um, it wasn't till later on in life. So I was either on my own most of the time or I was with my brothers. Mm -hmm. And when you're with the boys, you got to learn to, you know, my brother always used to say, if you're going to run with the big dogs, you're going to have to learn to lift your leg a little higher. <laughs> yeah. And so I became, so having these, you know, if they, sometimes they were fun fights and funny fights, but then sometimes they were like, uh-uh. No, sir. Not doing it. I don't care. Fire my ass. I ain't doing it. <laughs> um, and so he just said, you know what? You're a punk. And you're going to be the punk. And that's going to be your image. And I was like, <laughs> okay, fine. So, I mean, there was that part of that. Uh, there was the part of that personality that um, I tapped into my tomboyishness from, sure. you know, that I could bring out and, and bring it to that to that uh, but i mean deep down inside i'm just a freaking wuss <laughs> i'm just a kitty cat i'm just a little you know like i think you could hold your own though in any well, argument um, that you got in without well, a doubt i mean i know how to play, i know how to play that card if you put me in that sure. position so sure. you'd rather not yeah you know and but yeah i i kind of like just like be nice now it's time to play nice but yeah. Well, cool. Well, let's go into the track by track. Um, so I have one question before before we do that. Yeah. Um, so we know now that Prince recorded a ton of music that was sometimes released, sometimes not. In the recording sessions for the Vanity Six album, were you guys recording songs that didn't make it to the record, or was it just like he had like specific songs in mind, did them, and that was that? He was always working on something. And um, with me being married to Leroy Bennett, uh, I wasn't at his house as often as, as Vanity was. And she did a lot of different things. You know, they were always, he was oh he, he constantly was recording, constantly writing. Um, he didn't know anything else to do. He was not gonna be out in the backyard cutting the lawn. You know, he's, he wasn't going to and she wasn't going to be planting flowers in, in the flower bed. Um, so that's what he did. That was him. That was what he was all about. And there was a lot of stuff that he was always inventing. There was a lot of stuff that he was always uh, playing around with, experimenting with. And he'd get her in there on the microphone. And sometimes and a lot of times um, there were times when she wasn't there and I would get the phone call so often at like two, three o'clock in the morning, you know, always the same thing. What are you doing? You know? And I always felt like he's the boss. So I'm not going to say, Oh, nothing. Oh, I'm sleeping. You know, I just, <laughs> I had to, I had to say something that I was doing something, you know? And plus I kind of started to get to the idea of what he was calling for, why he was calling. And a lot of those times it was because he wanted me to come over. And some of the times, um, we would just watch movies and we talk about the film. We talk about the script. We talk about delivery of the lines and the actors that were playing the parts and, you know, and put, pull everything apart and, and, and discuss stuff, or we just sit and watch something, or he would want me to come into the studio and, and tinker around with him. And um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that, um, that was taped because um, there was stuff that, I never knew when a tape for sure was rolling because I never, I mean, sometimes he would pull the tape machine out, the big master machine. Um, that's when the masters are like two inches thick. And um, so I, if I saw it moving, of course, and, and he had hit the button, I knew we, we, we were recording something. But sometimes um, I don't know if he, there is a number of things that I did with him that he had on tape 
what happened to some of that stuff, I don't know. I think some of it um, didn't get destroyed, but I think he didn't really, he didn't have like the best setup for preserving the tapes in some respects. Even when they opened his vault, there was some stuff that was in really tough shape. Um, with, I don't know if it was water damage, it got moisture or what the, what the story was. So there was, there was, to answer your question in a shorter version, yeah, the, we did record a lot of different things. Um, and there's, it's a mishmash of some things. I mean, some couple of things came out into the songs and, and anything that he felt was worthy enough got on an album, you know, but, um, I don't know what's there now. You know, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. that sounds great. And we okay. might have our friend Aisha joining. She'll just quietly join the group if she makes it here. But yeah, so there's eight songs on the album. Mm. Brendan, were they all there at once, or did he kind of throw them at you as they came along? They kind of came along. Okay. Yeah. Nasty I mean, Girl was the first, which is yeah. the first song on the album. Yeah. Yeah, that to was... Your knowledge, to your knowledge, is that is the, uh, there a Prince version of that song? I don't think so. Of just him doing it? Yeah, of him doing it and then saying, like, this is how it should go or whatever. No, I don't think so. If there is, um, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, the music part of it, yeah. But as far as him doing it as um, something to her for her to work off of, they didn't, they, they didn't record it that way. Right. They just, you know. He had her there and okay this is what we're gonna do and let's do it and they just you know took it step by step or whatever i've always wondered about that so thank you <laughs> <laughs> so brenda i really feel like you're the bedrock of this album because every song has that really distinct harmony so even though the album switches genres a lot and switches moods that harmony and the parts you put on kind of is the cohesion for the whole album wouldn't you guys agree like you know whether it's a nasty girl where you're like everybody like there's there's always the brenda part of the song that i am the one to when i'm in the car like i'm the <laughs> one singing the brenda part in fact i gotta tell a story well it's four songs now so i'll, I'll wait but <laughs> so nasty girl we're talking about seven i remember you know being 12 hearing the song like i need seven inches or more i'm like oh my good like even <laughs> for the even for these days like it's kind of wild <laughs> brenda the first time you heard that song we were like Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did she re did they really how is how are we hearing this? <laughs> I know. Uh, I did feel like Prince did a really good job with Vanity's voice because you know when she came out with the solo albums, I didn't feel they produced her as well, but he really brought the both the best out of what she had to offer, I feel like, on these songs. I um I have to agree with you on that. Um I heard uh, some of her stuff, a little bit of her stuff after she had left and she was on her own. Um, but um I mean, that just goes to show you, I mean, their their relationship was so tight and so close. Right. And there was really such a chemistry with those two um, that lasted till, to, till both of them passed away. Right. You know, they, they, that, there was part of that connection between them that never ended. Um, not spiritually, not emotionally. Um, there's those people you meet in your life that you're just always like connected with. Yeah, yeah, and um, and she was just they were so, you know to me they they seemed to be such an incredible couple together. They just seemed to belong to each other, or belong with each other. Um, it was pretty tumultuous at times, but because they were very both very strong people, right? You know, well, I'd say "Nasty Girl" is one of the funkiest songs that I've ever heard in my life. Uh, in fact, at my work meeting, I work for a nonprofit and they had like a team building meeting. They're like, if there's one song that could define you, what would it be? And everyone, you know, we're tr picking these arts. I said, Nasty Girl by Vanity Six, <laughs> right, right in front of the right in front of the CEO of Feeding America, Tampa Bay. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that's so you, Jeremy. So thank you for, uh, you know, for, for giving me some life. Well, let's move on. Track two was Wet Dream, a little bit more of a synthesizer song. Brenda, once again, your harmonies, everybody sing together. Like, 
your signature's all over that song, just creating a bedrock. What did you think of that one when you first heard it? I thought, oh, here we go again. Okay, <laughs> we're getting, we're digging it in. We're digging in. We're getting, we're digging our heels, not your heels, but we're just, you know, we're we're diving in and we're just going for it. Um, now, Nasty Girl um, also was like um, the springboard of the three of us working together and also seeing what we could do right. together musically. Um, Prince had had this discussion with me about and he about music and, and uh, being being a part of this project. And um, he I didn't say anything about what I had done musically up to that point. Right. Roy came in the room and um, Prince asked him. Being my husband, he out of respect, he asked Roy um what he thought about me because uh, joining this this uh this group the this project and and roy looked at looked at me and said you'd be a damn fool if you didn't do it <laughs> so um but also he said um he said yeah she can sing she can definitely sing and she didn't but he didn't he didn't elaborate any further than that and I said, and I, all I said to was to him was, yeah, I like singing. And um, because what I've been singing all my life, you know, and when you hear music, you just automatically start, you pick it up pretty quickly and you just start singing along. And so it's, um, and that's what had happened when in Prince's dressing room, when I, I was um, on the controversy tour, I had, I was his wardrobe mistress at the time and his videographer I, I did videos of his shows every night and i had a couple other jobs small jobs that i was doing um w within the crew and um and that's how he was he was playing um an unfinished version of stevie nicks's stand back and i picked up on it pretty quickly and I started kind of singing along, not really blasting it out or anything, but just sort of oh, kind of do, 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 you know, singing along. And he's just like looking at me and, and said, I didn't know you could sing. And I said, I like to sing. And that's all I said. I didn't say anything about having, you know, first time I went on tour was with Queen and Mata Hoople. I didn't say any of the other people that I had opened up for with the people that I, the other people I was working with. None of that stuff. I just said, yeah, I like to sing. And and Roy said, yeah, she can sing. She can really sing. So when we got together and we were recording and he set up the microphones, he said, OK, let's see what we can do for some background vocals here. And um, and I just let it loose. And <laughs> <laughs> all I heard was his voice in the headphones going, who was that? <laughs> Wait a minute, who's, hold it, whose voice was that, you know? <laughs> and he made Susan do something, and he made me do something. Now, he knew Susan. I mean, Susan and him, they she'd known him since she was 15 years old. Right. You know? And um, so he, he he figured out it's got to be Brenda. So, okay. All right. So that's what we got. All right. <laughs> and... Um, I have obviously a very distinctive sound to my voice and um, the two of them was a little bit more, um, I, I got a kind of a gritty voice at times. I got the, that sort of bluesy, spicy kind of thing going there, you know, and, um, and it does stand out listening to this again today for the first time in a long time was just, whoa. You know, it really stood out. One of the main things I, I can say about the whole album is that um, all the music part of it was so great. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of songs on here I I, I didn't care for. I didn't because I'm I don't like poppy music really. La 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 la. <laughs> it's not me. Um, but I did I did my best. And I jumped in and did did what I could on it. Wet Dream was um, 
I've always felt it was a little too fast. Okay. You know, it, it needed to s slow down just a tad. Um, I almost have to kind of listen to it to, to pick up some other stuff. But um, that, there was a good portion of, of that song that all I did was come in and do the background vocals on. Right. You know, and that happens sometimes, like with Blue Limousine. You know, next thing I know that we did that in Sunset Studios in, in Los Angeles. Um, and there was so much that was already done on that song. And I walked in and he says, OK, here you go. Take a listen. I'm going to give you one shot. And that's how it was a lot of times. With him. Wow. Yeah. You listen to it. And he'd hand you a lyric sheet. If you weren't the one who wrote the lyrics, hand you the lyric sheet and say, do it. You know? And I, and I remember one time not having a fight with him, but what do you mean? You know, wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta, nope, you do it. Or I'll get somebody in here that's gonna do it. I'll get somebody in here who wants to do it. You just do it. Oh, so I had to do it. So, and Wet Dream was one of the songs that was pretty much all done. I didn't really... I wasn't too much a part of that until the background vocals. Now, what a sick sense of humor Prince had, like some of those like, like squirty sounds with the synthesizers yes. and then the, the rainstorm at the end. Like, I'm like, this guy's sick. I, but, I, <laughs> but I, you're right. When I heard the, I heard that today, I, I kind of went, what did he do that for? <laughs> you know? And, and also I'm sitting there listening to it. Cause I listen to a lot of music in my car when I'm driving from place to place. And all, and like you said, with the little synthesizer things, that all I could do is sit there and go, you know, it's like a live wire kind of like, oh, somebody just gave me a shot. And I was <laughs> laughing at some of the things, remembering, oh my gosh, I remember this. Oh my gosh, I remember that. And um, one that was actually one of the songs that I had. It was hard for me to keep a straight face <laughs> when I was trying to do some of the the, the background vocals on it. Mm. And um, he would just look at it. at one point he kind of giggled but at one point also he turned and looked at me like okay you gotta settle down now <laughs> and you're like everybody sing together everybody <laughs> sing together <laughs> well let's talk about the two susan songs um make up and drive me wild are so they're so 2007 so ahead of the time all that electro clash that happened with peaches and later completely had to have been inspired by Vandy Six. And it's interesting that android kind of robotic sound that Prince used on Susan's vote. Now, I may be totally wrong, but I always felt that maybe Susan couldn't sing and he just had her talk those songs and that she was never on any of the, any of the other songs. Is that incorrect? Um, you're pretty close there. Okay. <laughs> and she, he didn't... He, um... Well, you said kind of Android uh, sound effect on her vocal. Um, I think he was, what he was doing was trying to um, not so much, you know, term it as that, but she was very young. Right. When we recorded this, she was very young. Um, she was only 16, 17. I think she was 16 years old, somewhere around there. And um, and you can hear it. I can hear it. Right. Because I can remember, you know, what she sounded like. And she sounded like a child. She sounded like a, a girl, a young girl. OK. Um, and I think he was trying to keep that because her whole little image was the thing. Of, the you know, teddy bear. And, bear. Yeah. and, you know, the the the, um, the sweet little kitten. And. um but he was trying to do something with the sound of her voice so it wasn't so so childlike. Right. You know, that what, it wasn't so youthful. You you want to be cool, not creepy, right? <laughs> 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 but I love her like deadpan delivery. I think it's so futuristic sounding. And it's interesting because the Susan songs, no one else, there's no background singers. Like I I don't feel like you or vanity appear on the Susan songs. I think it's just no, her. It's her. Yeah. And then, you know, very sparse electronic arrangements, very, very ahead of the time. And I feel like Prince didn't do anything like that. Jeffrey, you're a huge Prince archivist. Did he do anything like that anywhere else in his catalog? So electronica, futuristic? 
the only other song I would say, it, I mean, loose kind of because it's really on the techno side, but um, the human body is like a, is weird, just like makeup is weird, right? You know, like it's just one of those like the the imagination. I don't know, like growing up before the internet and listening to that song. I mean, that just that takes your mind like to a place that you just can't even picture. Like, what are they using to make those sounds and what's on her vocals and like right. and i just it was just so cool still is but Brenda, yeah did, human body did you hear the susan songs at all like when they're being recorded or they did they just kind of end up on the album and you're like oh, okay makeup i did okay um, and the things about the makeup they were all things that you know the things that she's saying in the lyrics combing her hair her hair was down to her waist right and she didn't always wear it curly she we, she had all these little sponge rollers when we did the curly biz uh, part of it, you know, with the promo stuff and um, some of the other uh, photo sessions that we did. Um, she had like her whole head was filled with these little sponge roll uh, curlers, okay. and then you know, take them out, you know, the next when she get up the next the next morning, and there'd be like this mass head of curls, but her hair is straight to uh, naturally totally straight and that's how it was when i met her her hair okay. was down to her waist parted down the middle and just all one length gorgeous 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 um but comb and she was always combing it comb hair i always comb my hair <laughs> you know um and it was it was her makeup wow. was her Really, I mean, the lyrics that the stuff that she's saying was really kind of what she was. That's that was her. That was what she was all about. You know, I mean, as a as a woman, as a girl. Now it must be noted that in the live version, it's Brenda that says, "Smoke a cigarette." I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that was the only smoker in the band, right? <laughs> no, and and so they tolerated it very well. I was never a heavy smoker. I wasn't a chain smoker or anything like that, but I was a smoker. Um, and Vanity never, she didn't care. She didn't give a shit. Um, but Susan, every she would just sit there and like a rabbit. And, you know, was, and she'd kind of look at me, you know, like, oh, do you have to do that? You know. <laughs> um, but also what drive me wild, I thought was um, she was trying to be a sexy as she could right without being over exaggerated you know because the whole thing behind it ooh, drive me wild you know i mean that was kind of the message there and i prefer the album version because that single version had some more like guitar and stuff and it was a little bit more mainstream mm. i feel i feel like the album version so innovative and in its sparseness so i prefer the album version the 12 inch version though is like different and funkier you like the 12 inch one? See, we're talking about seven inches, 12 inches. <laughs> I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a theme here. Well, the, the 12 inch one, I think, was for the clubs. Right. You know, and that was the whole thing behind with her stuff was the groove. You know, that that beat, that constant beat and the groove that was that was with it, um, that it created. And um, I love that whole when I hear the beginning make makeup playing, it's it's just like, oh yeah, I right. want to punch it. <laughs> I mean, when you listen to it, um, it's like two eighties recording sound. You know, I mean, it sounds good, but there's stuff I would like to take and really punch up the bass more and and really you know get a, that really deeper feeling with what's going on in, in those, in, especially in the beginning, and. Um, Drive Me Wild is, um, it's got a pop edge to it, mm -hmm. even though it's got that, you know, synth funky kind of um, stuff that you guys are talking about. It, it had a kind of pop edge to it. Um, and I liked both of them. I thought they, they, they suited her well for him having her do that. It you know, definitely created... Funny. Three very distinct personas. Very, very distinct. Very distinct. Yeah. Very distinct. Well, we, we are. Yeah. What you a know? mix, though. And it's so worked. So 
We have about 15 minutes and four songs. We're going to do it. <laughs> okay. He's so dull. Um, now, I, I was babysitting with my brother. I got to tell the story, Brenda. I was okay. babysitting with my brother. <laughs> my best friend, Josh Coppins, was there. And when the Brenda part came on, I want to tell him that I wish he was dead. Drop dead. My friend thought I was saying that to him. He didn't know it was part of the song. I still don't <laughs> think he believes me. I'm like, no, that's in the song. Brenda <laughs> says that. So Josh Coppings, to this day, still thinks I told him to drop dead in 1987. <laughs> so did Des Dickerson write that song or was that a, a Prince song? Say that again. Did Des Dickerson write that song? He's so dead. Yes, he did. No, okay. Des, Des Dickerson did write that song. Um, and that was that was one of the things with that is um, Prince uh, wanted that contribution. Okay. From from uh, from Des, and um, I wasn't that thrilled with it because I didn't feel like it wasn't it wasn't a a, a genre or a style of a song that really I felt like I, I I had I had to put my like you know it wasn't me it wasn't the type of thing and type of right. stuff that I would normally want to do um, but I had to put that aside and I had to find a spot in there somewhere that I could just kind of like get in and do, do, do my thing with, you know, um, your harmonies are beautiful on it, but wasn't this the first single? I always felt like it was a terrible choice for the first single. I did. Well, I, a nasty girl. Oh, oh no, nasty girl was the first thing. Yeah. Um, he, he so dull was the first one. Okay. It, and it did surprisingly well. Okay. Um, and then, then I think it was nasty girl after that. Wow. And then of course it was, you know, like, oh, um, but of course, the single had to be sort of trimmed back. And, <laughs> the um, single was only four inches, not seven. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and and with um, when we did the video, it kind of tied the whole theme of the song right together a little bit more. You know, I mean, to hear it, to see these these girls in lingerie. And they're singing, you know, about this guy. It, you don't expect that. You expect, you know, like these girls that are going to be sitting either having a pajama party. Right. Of, you know, or they're going to be all sitting around, you know, doing their makeup stuff or playing around with hair things or something like that. It didn't fit to me. It didn't. It just kind of seemed like, you know, but when we did the video and the guy was in it, um, it kind of helped to tie it together a little bit more, you know, where especially like Vanny was just like, oh, you're so dull. <laughs> you know, um, so but yeah, if a girl answers. Oh, no, <laughs> this is the moment <laughs> we've all been <laughs> waiting for. The first time I heard the song, because I was, I loved the Brenda songs on Apollonia 6. When I got to this song, Brenda, and it got to your part, I think I just fell over. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> my question is, who wrote the rap? The iconic Brenda Bennett rap. Who wrote <laughs> iconic that? Iconic Brenda. <laughs> um, I did not write the rap. Oh. <laughs> um, Vanity and, um, well, actually, I did do a little bit of stuff in that. Um, and I think some of it was done, actually, be, to be honest with you, too, I think it was a combination of stuff. I mean, Vanity... Um, contributed her thoughts and a few of her lines. I wound up contributing a few of my thoughts and my lines. And I, he was working with Morris mm. and they were messing around. And, you know, all from, and that's kind of how he works sometimes. He, he picked up things from just the vibe of what was happening at the moment or what was being bantered about back and forth between people when, you know, you get into this whole, um shtick right stuff you know and um with uh if a girl answers i just um you know when it came to doing the recording he said just do it bad just be really bad and i said okay here we go and so i did um it was I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it through without losing, without passing out from losing my breath, you know. Um, and I, I remember when I finished, you know, everybody sitting there going, <laughs> you know, kind of. And I said, "Was it? Was how was that? Was that okay? Is that what you were looking for?" 
And he just looked at me and said, I ain't changing a thing. <laughs> not changing a thing. You did that in one take, Brenda. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. my gosh, <laughs> man! It's, it, I, it's it's oh my god! It's like because you know the song starts off and it's like you 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 introduce yourself and it's fine and then you get the banter between Vanity and Prince and then you come out here and you slay, you <laughs> slay completely. Hey, like, that's I going too like, far. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's that's kind it's like of like a bath and puke. I was like, <laughs> ah, yes, let them have it. Well, the, the the line that kind of cracked me up was when you know, when I said, um, "Take my underwear and stick it in your mouth, and you'd love it because it just, you know, because you got, got no, no taste." taste. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I was all like, "Wait, this bitch got a new face, and now she got panties in her mouth because she ain't got no taste." <laughs> Um, oh, everything! I, I remember That's actually all... the whole the whole line um, that it, when Vanity says, "Why don't you put just tie a mattress to your back?" <laughs> that that come from that came from a conversation that Prince and I were having one one night, and um, it, it wasn't even it was one of those late night kind of things, and and we got on the su subject of Jimi Hendrix. And we're talking about some of some of his songs. And there's one of his songs where he, he's got a line um, where he says, um, let's see if I can get this straight. All night social workers standing on the street corner, all night social workers with mattresses on their back, mm. shot on curb service, curb service. That's in one of Jimi Hendrix's, uh, one of his songs. And um, and Prince was going with me in it. And so when we were doing the song and she, and she had, she said that part about, why don't you just tie a mattress to your back? Uh, I remember looking at Prince and he just went like this. You know? <laughs> and so, I mean, that's, that's what I mean. Part and parcel of, you know, you, you, you grab it. You yourself, Jeremy, as a songwriter, you pick up things from all over the place. Right. From all different occasions, people, thoughts, feelings, you know, something so minor seemingly to some people you know you find you it, it stands out to you and, and and you um you catch it and and capture it in a different way and it you know you wind up doing something with it so um yeah something and that always made me laugh about that one is the the vocals at the end like we have this powerhouse rap from brenda now that you're not singing on the end at all are you is that just vanity the no, that's, I'm, I'm in there. Oh, you're too. in there? Yeah, okay. We, we're all doing it. We're all oh. just trying to do it up in that higher. The girl answers, don't hang up. Okay. And I wanted to really just do, oh, yeah, you know, and, and throw some <laughs> other things um, in there. But because um, it just seemed like here's this thing, you know, this this bantering thing going on between Vanity and this guy on the phone. And and she was she was trying to keep her cool and she was doing her best to keep her cool, and he was pissing her off and she was trying to throw it right back at him, and then it got to the point where it's like, all right, that's enough, right? And I, ste and I stepped in and, and did what I did, and then you like you said you've got all of this electronic stuff going on at the end, and then you've got these these three little voices going, hey, look at that. Just don't hang up, you know. And it should have been more. That's what I always thought too. Like, you know? yeah. I mean, if if you, but that was back then. That was 1982. Okay, so um, it could almost have shortened up. Okay. Because there's an awful long space there, you know. As as a, as the producer and me listening to it, there's a there's a little bit of a, too long of a space there. Um, between that and when the vocals come in to say sing that you could have shortened that up and brought the vocals in sooner and faded the song out more you know uh faded the song out right there at the end right um because it, i found myself today going oh you know like okay when's it when's it gonna stop <laughs> it was i i enjoyed all the i enjoyed all the other stuff and i kind of enjoyed this but i don't think we need this over here anymore right. you now um, and also, you know, it really, as much as you guys, you know, love it, um, if a girl answers is so, um, 
and that could be a hit today. Right. You know, it kind of stands the test of time more, where it's almost a classic, not just because of the story and the lyrics, but just, you know, the music and the, and the rap thing. That was actually the first rap song that came out by a girls group. Oh, wow. Oh, Yeah. well, moving on. I remember when I got the album. Now, on the Apollonia 6, the Brenda song is my favorite. You wailed on Blue Limousine. You sang your heart out on A Million Miles. You growled on Some Kind of Lover. So reading the liner notes, I'm like, here comes the Brenda song. And I will admit, I was a little disappointed that you didn't get to sing more on the van. I thought, you know, he kind of had you talking on Bite the Beat. And I grew to love it. But I was ready for that powerhouse Brenda vocal performance. And I felt like it was kind of a little understated. Yeah, well, I mean, it was the first album, wasn't it? Right. You know, the first album, you are, um, you obviously want to have a couple of songs that's going to be hits. Right. It was it was a test. It was a test ground, you know, Okay. um, for the group, as well as, um, you know, we didn't know how people were going to react, you know, how the media was going to react. Um And it's still, I mean, like MTV wasn't quite out yet, Right. you know? So we really didn't have, um, there was the, the, some of the shows that we performed on, um, Solid Gold. And there was this one show, I, I wish to God I could remember the name of it because so many people watched it. It was a music show. It was on a Friday night. Um, and there would be, you know, uh, musical guests. And it was kind of like a, um up-to-date bandstand sort Okay. of show and it was on it was on one of the major networks nbc abc cbs or something and it wasn't solid gold that was on saturday mornings we did that show twice and um but anyway so we did there were show there were a few shows that we did and there was you know as much magazine article things that we could that could be done Right. Um, but as far as like we, you know, back then we didn't have what we have now. I mean, Right. you've got, you've got all the Internet stuff, for heaven's sakes, you know, and, and there's so many more ways of being able to get yourself stuff yourself and your stuff out there and heard. This was not this was Right. just, you know, and you had to try and be on the radio. You know, Warner Brothers took a really big chance on this. Um Especially because, I mean, here we are. <laughs> cover. Look at that cover, you know? I mean, Susan in her lot, her stockings and garters, you know? I mean, um, Tipper Gore, it was because of it was because of this stuff and Prince's stuff, you know, the the whole purple family before we were purple family. Um You know, she was up in arms Right. with the whole, you know, sexual sexuality of everything. And that's that's when the whole thing she worked to have, um, uh, what do you call it? The um, Was it the PMRC, her little group? What's that? Wasn't she the PMRC, the Parents Music Resource Center? So I, I It was, thought that it was was something like that, but she was instrumental in getting things uh, graded. the parental advisory Oh, yeah. singer. Parental advisory, Yep. um, yeah, PG thirteen, uh, being um, having things categorized of, you know, for who could who could watch it or who couldn't watch it or listen to it or whatnot. Um, when Nasty Girl hit so big, um, the radio version obviously had that section taken out. about Right. doing it on the limousine floor and seven inches or more or whatever. Um, and I mean, and still all of that, it was amazing that we wound up selling 500,000 copies, which is a cold album. Um, so that's, we, we broke some barriers. We helped, we helped Prince break barriers, but also what we did specifically, you know, even pushed it through for a woman's standpoint. Right. you know um that it's okay to be sexy it's okay to you know be uh honor your body honor your your looks and and all that sort of thing um bite the beat it was a fun thing It's kind of blondie-ish to me, like kind of new wavy. In a way, yeah. 
Yeah, that was um, that was Jesse Johnson. Okay, I grew to really love that song. It, and I you know, love, you know, you hear that little organ sound, that little beep, 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 yeah. beep, beep. That was on one of those little toy things. Oh, wow. That he had, like, he had it set up on something like a little shelf sort of thing. And that's what he was playing. On, and he played the little solo on that, too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and every time he played it, I'd giggle. <laughs> I'd say, Shut up. Be quiet. Because... Um, I, it just struck me funny, you know, this little toy thing. Do, 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 do. Um, and to listen to my vocal on it, um, I have to go, is that me? Is that, that doesn't sound like me. Is that me? Um, it's definitely different than I expected the first time I heard it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And I, I, I was trying to, when I was singing it, I was trying to, put myself into what I thought I should sound like for the style of the music. Okay. It, it's a, it's the other song on the album. He's So Dull and Bite the Beat are two songs I never, ever would have recorded at any other time. Right. Because they just weren't the kind of music that I would, would have done. Um, but I, like I said, with the He's So Dull, I had fun with Bite the Beat. Um, three times two. Now, your harmony, I always felt your harmonies really anchored the chorus on this one. Yeah. I, it, even now to this day, when I listen to this today, um, I have never been able to listen to this song without um, tearing up. Mm -hmm. And just... Um, this song, uh, Vanity had never done a slow song, a ballad type song in any form before. This was her first shot at it. Right. And um, she was having a really bad day. Um, she wasn't feeling well. Her and Prince weren't very happy with each other there was just a lot of stress and there was a lot of tension and we were in the studio at sunset sound and she was trying her best to do stuff and um she was having a very difficult time with it and that's where especially towards the end when you hear her sister can you hear me oh, you know yeah. and, and then also you hear her say um somebody help me or something like something like that right you know um she was really down that day and so what you hear her trying to put in it is so much emotion there was times that she was crying when she was trying to sing this and he had to do his best to try and you know manipulate her vocal or put some effect on or whatever it was he was doing with it um he wanted to keep capturing that emotion right um without it sounding like she was obviously sobbing at times. And, and it was a tough song for her. And it was, it was just a tough day. It was a real tough day. And um, I love the melody of it. I mean, I love when you, that opening happens, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful song in that sense. Um, and, but at the same time, it's um, because I was there and knew what was going on and what what kind of a, a day those two seem to be having um and also you know i mean i'm listening to this stuff and um he's gone and she's gone mm. and they 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 left this earth within two months of each other and it's it's hard for me sometimes to listen and not have that come to the to the front to the forefront to me you know and um i i think um i mean a lot of people have asked me about the song and and i haven't there's been times that i just you know kind of just sort of blew it off and just oh well you know i don't know why he chose it for the last song or why right. we chose it to be you know um I don't know. Do you have any other questions about that? Well, I will say, you know, 
the eight songs on the album, when I was the kid in the bedroom listening to it, you know, Nasty Girl, you know, was the fun song. Drive Me Wild was funky. But three times two, that was the song that just made me feel that I had power. Like, I know the song's about female empowerment, but the blend of your vocals and the message of the song, you gave us power. And there's so much power in that song. And it's such a lost classic. You know, it's mm. something, but really a masterpiece. The, the, the vulnerability of the performances, it's really genuine. It's really sincere. And that, well, after that story I just told her, told you, yes, you can. It's very easy yeah. for you for, to to pick up on that. And you pick up there. One of the the things that she says in that song is, um, "My made up vanity, my made up name is vanity." Right. You know, and that was kind of like a sort of little blurby message to everybody that you know. Of course, my I didn't. I wasn't born with the name vanity. You know. Right. I mean, this is this whole thing is. A made-up thing you know this whole thing is just you know um but we're doing this and we're having fun and we're doing you know like let's try this and you know you don't realize um i don't realize as an artist sometimes how things affect other people you know primarily for me the main thing is anything that i've i've done that i've written recorded and have gotten out there um if people enjoy it and they get something from it, um, my main thing is if it's make it makes you happy, then I'm I've succeeded in what I set out to do. Even if it is a blues song, even if it is a you know tears in the beers kind of thing, right? Um, there's um, I don't set out to I don't know I've I've never had a big ego of you know like aren't I great? Oh, is my stuff great? Isn't this, you know, like I just, you know me, Jeremy, um, in that sense. But I, um, I don't, it doesn't click to me. I don't, rem I have to, somebody has to bring me around sometimes to remind right. me, like what you said earlier of how my, mu uh, the music of the band and myself, particularly my part that I played in this, how it affected your lives. Right. And um Brenda, you gave us armor. You gave us an armor to protect our, <laughs> you know, really to protect ourselves. And you know, that's to to give that to somebody through music. Like I know you said you want to make people happy, but even more important than that, you gave us strength. And that's I'm like I'm on the verge of tears. Like there's nothing more important than that in the world. Yeah. I mean, um, and that is you don't it, you, you just I just don't realize it that um that it becomes as important as it does. And, um, you know, cause also on another side of the coin, it's my job. It was my job, right. you know, right. and this is what I set out to do. And I did this and okay. All right. Uh, okay. On to the next thing. <laughs> um, you know, um, but thank, thank you. You know, I mean, for whatever it did to help you guys in any way, you know, um, how much joy, <laughs> yeah and i mean like at, literally anytime i've ever been to a club and nasty girl came on the place could be dead and it comes to life when nasty girl comes on it's, every time every time always like, always it's so and i mean like it's great because i mean as a prince fan it's like you know you're sometimes at a club and you're like um oh, hate the music and then it's like oh it's a prince song you know and then it's like so it's like double double cool because it's nasty girl and you know <laughs> Well, Brenda, let me ask one more thing because I know we need to wrap up. And I do hope we can all meet again for next month for Apollonia 6. All right. But um, the final question is, as a person in Vanity 6, you know, a lot of people in the press will be like, this was Prince's creation. Some people would say he exploited women. But I never felt that you were anybody was exploited. Being from the inside, how did it feel to you? Um, In those, in the, well... Saying because we're talking about Vanity Six, right? Tonight, um, it didn't feel that way to me. Right. I mean, there was a little part of it that I I felt maybe it was an exploitation because of when he and I would have fights and arguments about the trashy lingerie and and um, and and just how far he was going to push that. And um, but at the same time, I never felt um, we were just. 
I can't put a word. It's, there's not one word I can put on it. You know, right. where it was just, it was, we were, I found myself involved in this happening, you know, and, and I, which is a cliche word to use, but at the same time, it was a happening. I mean, he had a blueprint of what he wanted to try and do, but he didn't have all of the, the, the directions, right? all the designs completed. And that was you that came in and all of you took in and kind of all ran of us, with it. But yes, all of us were a part of, um, even though he had the blueprint and we were helping him to realize that blueprint. Right. And realize, you know, and and try and make help create what he wanted to have. You know, I mean, he wanted this family. He wanted this working musical family, and just so many different personalities throughout all of us. You know, um, just the three of us. I mean, we had our moments, right. of course. You know, any family that's got more than two kids have their moments. You know, right. Um, and I mean, Vanity came from a whole different situation and she was coming from this whole, um, you know, she'd been a model and uh, an actress, um, but she was just something else that I've not met anybody like her. And right. she's so beautiful. I mean, physically, and she was beautiful inside, but also there was a vulnerability about her that was so, um, she had to protect it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she was not always on the defensive, but um, that vulnerability, she, you know, um, I, I tend to have be the same way in the sense where, you know, uh, if a girl answers like, OK, you, you heard me take over <laughs> and say, OK, that's enough. And, you know, like and pretty much eh, to you, you know, um, there are times when um, I'm very sensitive mm -hmm. and I've been vulnerable in, at times. And so you learn to um, thicken that skin; otherwise, you're going to just crash. Right. You're not. You're not going to make it through. And when you find yourself in a do or die situation, you know you have to. You have to. You have to pull yourself through in some way. Um, I'm sure you guys have experienced something like that in your life, where you yeah. have found yourself in in that position, and you just had to do something to bring yourself out, or um, for your own protection so you don't go totally nuts over something and totally melt right. you know, into a puddle. But um, so she was, um, she had a, a lot of good street value. Um, and Susan, she was very smart. She is very smart, um, but she's also been very, she's the youngest in her family. Okay. And she had a very good um, family unit that she grew up in. She's got very strong family values and they were very protective of her, but they were also very um, open with her making her own choices right. in life, you know, and her own choices in her direction of what she was going to do. They supported her. They might not always like what she or agreed with what she was trying to do. Like when she got involved with us, you know, they were kind of like, oh, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> and, um, but then, you know, she actually, she pointed out the whole thing about, well, I'm going to be making some money, <laughs> you know, but, and I'm not going to be doing, you know, I'm not going to be stripping naked or anything, you know, right. Um, they saw the sense of it kind of thing after a while. And me, I come from kind of an eclectic background of, um, you know, from Native American and old world colonial America. And my family's been in this country since like the 1600s um, from the English, French and Scottish side. You know, and then the other side is that they were here, <laughs> you know, they're Native American. So I'm white, you know, the blonde hair and blue eyes. But at the same time, um, here I was, you know, it was a mixed, diverse kind of uh, situation where you had you had white people, you had black people, you had, you know, some, uh, Susan's families from India. You know, I mean, it was such an eclectic mix. I mean, even Prince himself is his, his mother was from Baton Rouge and um so she was Creole and she, there was a mix there, a racial mix there. So um, there was a lot of stuff that was brought to the mix. Right. There was a lot of stuff 
as part of the recipe for all of this thing for, for Prince. It's kind of like his song Uptown coming to life, just where everyone just blended in, was, you know, all together, unified. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, and it wasn't about the black. It wasn't about the white. It wasn't about any of that kind of thing. It was just about the music. You know, end of the day, it was about the music. And that's what he was all about. And that's what I was happy to be a part of, was the music. Um, not every time did I like everything. <laughs> but that's that's uh, it's only human, too, you know. Yeah. I didn't expect to like everything that he did. I mean, I love a lot of his songs, but there's some of his songs that, you know, I could take or leave him. And so, you know. But I have enjoyed this. Yes, Brenda, thank you. So much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh, we are not worthy. <laughs> um, I, I hope that you know um, that I answered your questions and you found what you were looking to try and get for, oh, for, for this sure. evening. I just think it's such a great piece of music. Like this is such a great album, and to sit here and talk about each song and to dig into it, you know, everyone after this podcast. Go listen to Vanity Six. It's not on streaming yet, is it? The, come on, Princess oh. Day. Let's let's get this going. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, this is such yeah. a legendary album, and it was so. It's a it's it's such a solid album, and that's what makes me mad that I can't find it anywhere. Right. Like I need to like I I need to stream makeup at least eighteen times yes. in a row. I'm justice so sorry. For, <laughs> justice for Vanity Six. Hashtag. <laughs> Seriously. It's it's like a crime that the song Nasty Girl is not streaming on for the for the kid you know the people to discover it. You know, I um yeah, they're a little bit tight about a lot of things, the 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 estate. And um I know that they have plans okay. um with some of this Good. um this year, as you probably know, is the fortieth anniversary of Purple Rain. Mm. Um so I don't know. I I don't understand. There was um there actually was um a package of something that was put out a few years back on Vanity Six, but it was very quietly. It wasn't anything that was really a big made a big deal of. I mean, they, usually when they're doing something, they it's right. in the press and you know uh, kind of you kind of. I just saw this little blurb of something for me to go what <laughs> really, and then it, then it just seemed like poof, it was gone. So um, they own everything to do with Vanity Six, right. as far as the music and the name and all that sort of business. So um, I did know, I did hear about them wanting to do some kind of a package of, you know, the Prince time, Vanity Six, Apollonia Six kind of conglomerate right. sort of thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. All right, friends. Well, I'm just gonna go and smile for the rest of the night because this has just been so awesome <laughs> thank you all and i hope to see you next month and uh brenda we will catch up soon again <laughs> okay very good and i'll talk to you guys later have a great night you too thanks and, brenda i love you likewise thank you so much <laughs> love you brenda love you too. <laughs> bye bye bye